Welcome to the Trend Micro Cloud One Workload Security and Deep Security video series. My name is Nick Russo and I'm a customer service engineer with the Hybrid Cloud Support Team. In this video, we're going to review the Deep Security Agent activation process, some of the common issues that users may run into during the activation process, and some troubleshooting steps that can help with resolving these problems before contacting our support team. We'll first review the different types of deep security environments, as well as the associated communication directions. Then we'll look at common deep security agent activation issues, a successful activation example, and lastly, we'll review some troubleshooting steps to take when activation fails. When discussing deep security agent activation, we must first differentiate between the two activation initiation options, manager initiated and agent initiated activation. When activating an agent from the manager, the computer to be activated must exist within the computer's list from a connector, like AWS, Azure, or vCenter, or the computer must be manually added with its IP address or host name to the manager. After being added, from the Actions tab for the computer, there's a button to activate the agent. In addition to performing this action manually, an event-based task can be created to perform the activation on a computer, depending on the event that takes place, such as being created within an existing connector, like a new EC2 instance or VM in VMware. When the manager sees a new computer object created under a connector, we can initiate the activation command, applying a policy and relay group at the time of activation. There are other event-based options that you can take advantage of as well, depending on your agent activation requirements. In addition to activating from the manager, a deep security agent can be activated from the agent side, allowing administrators that may not have direct access to the manager console to activate newly deployed machines. In the opt DS agent directory in Linux, or C program files trend micro deep security agent directory in Windows, the DSA control utility can be executed with the dash A switch with the DSM parameter and any additional customization parameters to ensure the agent has the appropriate configuration applied during activation. You can specify a policy to be applied, a computer group to add the computer to, or assign a relay group to the computer. For customers using the Cloud One Workload Security product, a tenant ID and token must be passed as parameters during activation. There's also an option in the manager that will apply a policy if agent-initiated activation is used, but no policy is specified at the time of activation. In the activation demonstration later in this video, we'll step through both activation options we just covered. Depending on which type of manager is being used, the appropriate network configuration must be in place to allow agents to initiate activation or for the manager to activate an agent. There are essentially three different types of managers available. An on-premise deep security manager, marketplace deployed deep security from AWS or Azure, and this is also considered on-premise as well, or Cloud One Workload Security, which is the Trend Micro hosted manager option. Depending on which product or manager type you're activating against will determine the URLs, IP addresses, and ports that the agent will need to be able to communicate with. We maintain a document in our help center that will be linked in the video description below with details about the different URLs, IP addresses, and ports used by the deep security agent to communicate with the manager. For customers using the Cloud One Workload Security product, the agent can be activated against agents.deepsecurity.trendmicro.com and port 443 outbound would be used to contact that address. Customers using an on-premise deployment of deep security will have the ability to specify the host name for agent activation as your manager nodes may sit behind a load balancer and the port for communication during activation can be specified while installing the manager software. If the default configuration is specified during installation, activation for an on-premise, non-marketplace deployed manager would be port 4120, so the agent would need the ability to communicate to the manager nodes on this port. For environments that may include a load balancer in front of your manager nodes, you'll likely use port 443 to communicate with the load balancer in the activation process. Now that we've discussed the different types of activation and communication considerations for the different manager options, we'll step through activating a deep security agent for an on-premise manager and Cloud One Workload Security Manager. The agent is not currently installed on this server and I'll be using a deployment script for my on-premise manager to install then activate the agent. I'll start by opening the deployment script page in my DSM from support then deployment script. I'll select the appropriate options for operating system, policy, and relay group, then copy the contents of the script in the window. I'm going to save the contents of this script as a PS1 file on the target server, then execute it via PowerShell. Since this computer object is part of a vCenter synchronization, the synced object is shown as activated in the console. Next, we're going to activate the same server against a Cloud One workload security environment where we'll collect the activation information from the manager, then go over the parameters used in activation. Similar to the previous use of the deployment script, we're going to collect info from the manager for activation. 
When activating an agent to Cloud One Workload Security, we must also pass two pieces of information as parameters in the activation string, the tenant ID and the agent token. To find this information, I can go to the deployment script, scroll to the bottom of the script, then find the DSA underscore control A command. You'll see that there are two parameters in addition to the DSM address that I'm including in the command blurred out for privacy, the tenant ID and the token. I'll now execute that command and let's review the output of the activation. When activating an agent, this is a good reference for the steps that are happening in the background between the agent and manager. The manager is getting information about the server, getting the encrypted communication between the two set up, and applying the appropriate security configuration to the server. Since I didn't apply a policy to the server, my default policy that is specified under Administration, System Information, Agents, is applied to the server, where only anti-malware is turned on. Starting with Deep Security Agent version 20.0.0.1337, there are two new commands added during the activation process, update component and set DSM CA cert. Now that activation is complete, my agent will begin downloading the protection module components based on the features turned on in the policy applied to the computer. Since this computer is not part of a connector in my manager, I can see that a manually created computer object was made, differentiated by the icon next to the name of the computer and the group the computer is a member of. We've now successfully activated an agent, but what if the activation fails? In this next section of the video, we'll review some of the common issues related to manager or agent-initiated activation, and step through a troubleshooting flowchart for each type of activation. When activating an agent from the manager side, the manager will use the hostname field to reach a computer that isn't synced from a connector like AWS, Azure, or vCenter, and attempts to contact the agent on port 4118. If manager-initiated activation fails, a reason is provided in the console. Unable to resolve hostname means that the manager is unable to translate the hostname to an IP address. The duplicate computer status means that another computer with the same name or IP address has been activated already. Deactivation required is reported if the computer being activated is already activated to another deep security manager. The agent not installed status is reported when activation is attempted on a computer object without an agent installed. Moving on to agent-initiated activation issues, when agent-initiated activation fails, the error message returned is very generic and normally references ensuring the option to allow agent-initiated activation is enabled. One common problem for failed agent-initiated activation is the syntax of the command. To avoid syntax issues, it's recommended to leverage the deployment script for activation or copy the activation line out of the deployment script, similar to the demonstration we stepped through. One thing to note is that the tenant ID and token are both case-sensitive and all letters must be capitalized. Another common problem is network communication from the agent to the manager. If the agent cannot resolve the DSM hostname, a firewall may be blocking communication to the activation port, 443 or 4120 depending on your environment, or if there's a network device that may interrupt encrypted communication with SSL inspection, adjustments should be made to ensure necessary communication can occur between the agent and manager. If the agent is able to reach the manager, but the manager cannot process the activation, we should ensure that the appropriate options are enabled to allow agent-initiated activation, Make sure the manager is not processing too many jobs concurrently, or perhaps the manager encountered an error during activation which would be logged in the server zero.log for on-premise environments. If there's reason to believe the activation issue may be manager-related for customers using our Cloud One Workload Security product, our support team has the ability to check server-side logs if needed. In this troubleshooting flowchart, we start in the top left with kicking off the activation process from the agent. And if activation is unsuccessful, move on to determining if the problem exists from the agent side or the manager side. We'll start by going down checking the agent side. We first confirm that we can resolve the address of the manager, whether it be for an on-premise or Cloud One workload security environment, the computer where the agent is installed must be able to resolve the hostname of the manager. If DNS resolution is working normally, then we must confirm whether communication from the agent to the manager is open. Using a utility like TestNet Connection and PowerShell can help with confirming this. As mentioned earlier in the video, the ports the agent uses to communicate for activation would be 443 for Cloud One Workload Security, 4120 for on-premise, or whatever port was specified during installation. If the communication is open, then we'll need to ensure there are no network devices between the agent and the manager that may perform SSL inspection or skew the encrypted communication between the two. If this is unknown, then a packet capture running on both the agent computer and the manager can help provide detailed information about the problem. From the manager side, we can ensure that the option for agent-initiated activation is enabled under administration, system settings, and an agent. The manager could also have a high number of active jobs running, and this can be identified by looking at the bottom status bar of the manager console. If there are several different tasks in process, such as a high number of anti-malware scans, recommendation scans, or updates, we may need to attempt activation again during a period of lower activity. 
Activation errors that occur at the manager level can also be identified in the server zero log for on-premise environments in the installation directory for the DSM software. If after confirming each of these items is not contributing to the activation issue, then we can collect a diagnostic package from the agent using the DSA control command with the dash D as in Delta switch. After executing the command, the package will be stored in the C program data trend micro deep security agent diag or var opt DS agent diag directory depending on the OS. This zip file can then be provided to our support team to help with identifying the underlying issue. When troubleshooting manager initiated activation, some of the same troubleshooting concepts and steps apply. When activating a computer from the manager, that server must be able to resolve the fully qualified domain name of the agent computer we're activating. We also need to make sure firewall ports are open for the manager to contact the agent on port 4118. The agent should also be listening on port 4118, and we can confirm this by using a command like netstat. Any network device between the manager and the agent that performs SSL inspection or that might interrupt the encrypted communication between the two needs to be addressed as well. If there are no activation errors in the agent log, then it would be beneficial for our support team to review a diagnostic package from the Deep Security Manager, which can be created under Administration, System Information. When troubleshooting activation problems, there may be a need to review the log files for either the Deep Security Agent or Manager to get more information about the problem preventing a successful activation. A diagnostic package is usually helpful to provide our support team, and the same log files referenced next will be included in that diagnostic package. The agent log files can be found in the C Program Data Trend Micro Deep Security Agent Diag directory, or VAR Opt DS Agent Diag in Linux systems. In these directories, the DS Agent log file is updated when an activation attempt is made and will contain details around why the agent is unable to activate. Comparing the entries in the log with the time when the activation was attempted will help narrow down where to look in the file and errors encountered by the agent will contain the word error or warning in the line. From the manager side, the log file to review, especially when performing activation from the manager and not the agent, would be the server0.log file. This can be found in the installation directory for the manager application, usually C program files trend micro deep security manager or opt DSM in Linux systems. After creating a manager diagnostic package, the systeminformation.xml file contained within can be helpful with determining the number of queued and active jobs as well as other information about the manager. The log files mentioned so far will contain default information logged by the agent and manager, but should this not provide sufficient detail, we have further options for increasing the amount of information collected. For the agent, on Windows systems you can create a file named dsagent.ini in the C Windows directory with the text trace equals star in it, as seen on the screen. Save the file, then restart the agent. On Linux systems, create a file named ds-agent.conf in the etc directory with the same contents trace equals star. After creating this file, restart the dsagent service for the change to take effect. Now that this additional logging is in place, attempt the activation again to collect more info during the activation process. To collect more detailed logging from the manager in an on-premise environment, navigate to the Administration System Information page, then click the Diagnostic Logging button on this page. In the pop-up window, adjust the settings on this page to specify the amount of time for the additional logging to run, and then select the options for Agent Communication Protocol Logging, Configuration and Protocol Issues, and Manager Job-Related Issues, then click Save at the bottom of the page. Next, perform your activation attempt again and collect a diagnostic package with this additional information now logged. If you have any questions related to the information in this video, or if we can assist with any activation issues you might be experiencing, feel free to reach out to our support team and we'd be glad to help. Thanks for watching.